Hello, I'm Asif Farouk of Fenextra and we're here at EBA Day 2015 in Amsterdam. Today I'm with Beren de Jong and Luigi Zangolini of Accenture. So thank you both for joining me. First question, Beren, is for you. Um, there's been a lot of talk at this conference about instant payments uh, in the Eurozone. What's the situation in the Netherlands? Let's see if I cannot mention anything specifically about the Netherlands. What I can mention is the fact that over 31 countries in the world have implemented one shape or form of immediate instant or real-time payments. Mm -hmm. uh, instant payments is driven not so much by legislation, it's not SEPA being pushed again, it's a consumer requirement. In the Netherlands, I do know that we're very innovative. We have uh, the highest adoption rate of mobile banking in the world, even higher than the US, higher than any European country. Ideal was invented here, uh, one of the main banking schemes that uh, provides a great alternative to alternative payment schemes. And we have innovative uh, startups uh, that, um, that are really famous uh, in the world. So uh, I believe that for the Netherlands, instant payments, real-time payments are a consumer demand, a re hard requirement that the banks need to step up to. Okay, uh, Luigi, what are some of the key learnings from the UK and elsewhere for the Netherlands and the Eurozone? Well, I think that there are um, three key main lessons learned uh, from um, immediate payments uh, implementation of the world and specifically from the UK faster payments example. And, uh, and the first one has to be around uh, um, customer proposition because whatever immediate payments uh, system will be designed, implemented in the Eurozone, that has to be driven from the perspective of, uh, of the customers, of the end users, and not from the perspective of the banks. And, um, and we see that kind of like the customer user's expectation and uh, customer user experience has been transformed in the last years uh, from the digital disruptors just like Google or Amazon or Apple. Yes. And uh, customers nowadays expect to have kind of like a 24 hour per seven um, availability to make uh, real time uh, payments and to have instant uh, availability of funds as well. Um, the second key lesson learned is uh, around the messaging standard. Um, clearly, very likely um, a new immediate payment scheme uh, will be based on uh, ISO 2022 um, standard. However, is, uh, this kind of standard is not completely fit for purpose for um, synchronous uh, real-time payments processing. UK uses, for instance, a uh, card scheme and um, for real-time payments processing uh, it, it, it does leverage a kind of like a, a, message form based on ISO uh, 8583. Uh, the SEPA CT message standard um, will have a lot of reusable elements. However, I think the key message there is that uh, is not a plug and play solution. And the fourth aspect um, in terms of lesson learned, which is particularly relevant now in the UK, is around open access. Um, the direct indirect uh, access model uh, that works in the traditional uh, CSM environment doesn't really work for uh, immediate payments processing. Uh, the, the reason for that is because uh, a bank or a non-bank payment service provider need to uh, provide a 24 hour per seven experience, real-time experience, uh, to their customers. Um, one of my favorite statistics out of uh, an analysis we did recently with faster payments is the fact that uh, about 50% of the payments, immediate payments in UK, are outside the nine to five uh, time zone. And, um, and therefore, providing kind of like open access and, and, uh, and 24 hour per seven access to um, the real time uh, uh, infrastructure uh, becomes vital. And, uh, and that should be not only for banks, but also for uh, 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 non-bank payment service providers. Well, final question for you. How will the Netherlands ensure compatibility with the Eurozone? Compatibility is a key point. The ECB, via the European Retail Payment Board, is driving harmonisation. It's not defining specific payment schemes. I really like the case in the UK, faster payments with much more experience over the years, where Vocalink as a central infrastructure is processing the ISO 8583 messaging centrally, but it allows uh, uh, the aggregators to provide message formats um, that are completely different to be driven through the system. So ISO 20022 
or uh, MT-103 messages can be used as well uh, on top of the current central infrastructure. This is a proof case that you can combine different messaging formats in the market mm -hmm. and also takes away an inhibitor for any banks, including the Dutch banks or any European banks, to move ahead with their own scheme. So schemes can, can work uh, on top of each other very well. Uh, in fact, because of this trend of consumer demand, I believe the banks need to step up. Um, Dutch banks, any European banks that do not have these schemes need to implement instant real-time payments even uh, just because it is the best alternative to alternative payment schemes that are around as well.